Hey guys, one of the questions on the q and I launched recently was which bike would I buy if my budget wasn't a constraint? After getting some questions from some of you, I thought it would be useful to do a thorough analysis on the market and better explain my choice. So let's see which bike is the best 302 stroke enduro bike in 2020. For this buyer's guide, we'll compare the KTM EXC 300 TPI 6 days edition, the Husqvarna TE300i Jarvis edition, the Beta 300RR race edition, the Sherco SE300 factory edition, and the TM EN300 FIES. I'll rate each bike in 5 different categories. Retail price, equipment, meaning all the extra parts that are not made in-house by the manufacturer, innovation, meaning all the technological features made in-house by the manufacturer, after-sale support, and maintenance costs. You might wonder why I didn't include performance in this analysis. Since I'm not actually testing the bikes, I cannot give you any feedback about how each bike feels personally. Plus, let's face it, every single brand in this buyer's guide has won a World Enduro Championship. So performance isn't really at stake here, so I'm just giving you feedback from a buyer's perspective. The points will be awarded according to each bike position in each category. We are comparing 5 bikes, so last place gets 1 point and first place gets 5 points. At the end, the bike that has most points wins. Pretty simple. Let's get the buyer's guide started with the retail price, which is pretty straightforward. In last place, as the most expensive, we have the Husqvarna 300 TEI Jarvis Edition with a retail price of $11,500. In fourth place is the KTM 300 EXC TPI 6 Days Edition with a retail price of $11,000. The TM 300 FIES costs $9,995 and comes third. In second comes the Sherco 300 SE Factory Edition at a retail price of $9,900. And finally, with the lowest retail price and as the winner of this category, we have the Beta 300 RR Race Edition at $9,500. I decided to use the average retail prices in the US because it's one of the most important markets for each of these brands. And each brand has to ship a great number of bikes across the same distance. In the Portuguese market, there were some discrepancies on the retail price that could be explained for the small yearly sales number for each brand. So the Beta gets 5 points, the Sherco 4, the TM gets 3 points, the KTM gets 2, and the Husky gets only 1 point. Now let's move to the equipment. Bottoming the list, we have the KTM 6 Days and the Husqvarna Jarvis Edition, both equipped with WP suspensions but the Husky has a small advantage since it comes with a front discard as standard. In a real close fight for second, we have the TM and the Beta, both with XL rims and KYB front forks. The Beta takes the edge because it has a sash rear shock. Sherco gets the top step of the podium with KYB front forks, KYB rear shock, XL rims and the largest fuel tank of the bunch with a capacity of 10.4 liters. To be clear about the score in this category, namely the suspensions, I think WP suspensions are good suspensions if you ride them on a hard enduro scenario, but when you ride them on a faster pace, they lack the bottoming resistance that, in my opinion, they should have. This usually implies that you have to spend an additional amount of money to customize and improve the suspensions on a broader setting in order to ride safely and comfortably in any scenario. The KYB suspensions, on the other hand, don't require any additional customization besides the one available on the suspension's clickers and have a great performance on a broad number of riding scenarios, including hard enduro. So if stock form suspensions have to undergo additional customization besides the one available, which means extra costs, do I consider them any good? Plain and simple, no. If you sell them as the best machines on the market, it doesn't make any sense that they only perform well on certain riding scenarios. These are the standings after this category. The Beta has 9 points. The Sherco is tied with the Beta with 9 points as well. 
the TM has 6 points and the KDM and the Husqvarna are on the bottom with 3 points each. Let's move to innovation. In last place we have the Beta Race Edition equipped with only the Beta Progressive Valve system and the late counterbalancing shaft. In fourth place we have the Sherco Factory Edition with the electronic valve system, which has been a real handful to KTM and Skvarna in terms of performance. Sherco has repeatedly shown that its 300 is right there next to the TPI performance on hard enduro grounds. The TM shows up in third, giving a good run for Pierre Mobility's money, being the second manufacturer to introduce the injection technology on the two-stroke engine. But we'll give the edge to KTM since they have the TPI's reliability more consolidated. The KTM wins the second place. In first place we have the Husqvarna which is identical to the KTM but has a composite carbon fiber subframe which makes it the most innovation filled bike of the bunch. These are the current standings. The Sherco leads with 11 points, followed by the Beta with 10 points. The TM fills the current 3rd place with 9 points, the Husky gets in the 4th place with 8 points and the KTM is at the bottom with 7 points. The next category is after sale support. In this category the TM falls behind for having the smallest network of dealerships scattered around the globe, which will make any issue in the after sale harder to fix, whether it's warranty problems or having access to spare parts since TM also suffers from lack of aftermarket parts. In fourth place, we have the Beta network falling just a little bit behind Sherco's network, which gets third place. The Sherco network and presence has been growing in the last few years, mainly out of Europe, such as the US and Australia. Leading this category is a KTM group, with KTM spearheading the list. The Skvarna takes second since it takes advantage of the KTM's network and presence. The after sales category has left the standings in quite an interesting standoff, where 4 bikes can still win the buyer's guide. Sherco still leads with 14 points, then we have Beta, KTM and Skvarna tied in second with 12 points, and at the end TM with 10 points. Last but not least, let's go to maintenance costs. I checked how much would cost the same genuine parts across all brands and based myself according to that. In the bottom again is TM, which is the most expensive by far. In fourth place, for my surprise, we have the Beta. Filling third and second places, we have the Skvarna and KDM, while the Sherco comes out on top with the lowest costs on genuine parts. With all categories discussed, the final standings are the following. Not surprisingly, the TM finishes in 5th place, with 11 points. The Beta didn't score many points in the last categories, which made the Italian Pony drop to 4th place with 14 points. Rising on the standings thanks to KTM, the Skvarna climbed to the bottom step of the podium with 15 points. KTM finishes as a runner-up with 16 points. Our winner is the Sherco SE300 Factory Edition with 19 points. So guys, I tried to be as objective as I could possibly be. But don't forget that this is still my opinion. We can have completely different views on what's better or worse, depending on each category. Also, don't forget that there is nothing like test riding a bike. At the end, you might even love the bike that you were least expecting. Hope you liked the video and that it helped you made a thoughtful and well-informed purchase. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.